As we all know, this is the most challenging time of year for board members, budget season. We all ran because we love Enfield, and our goal, as Dr. Schumann always tells us, is to provide a world-class education for all of Enfield's children. They deserve it, and we want to give it to them. Obviously, this is easier said than done. So my prayer tonight is for my colleagues on the board and the council to commit to this goal. I pray that we all be given the wisdom, patience, and collaborative skills necessary to agree on a fair budget that balances the needs of our students with the dollars it takes to meet them. Working together and with God's help, I know this is possible. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, fire evacuation notice. We have doors to the left of the, of the council chambers and we have doors in the back in case of a fire. Roll call, Kathy, please. Mr. Neville. Here. Mrs. Thurston. Here. Mr. Grady. Mr. Krizel. Here. Mr. Peabody. Present. Mrs. Ungar. Here. Mrs. LeBlanc. Here. Sorry. Chairman Serard. Mr. Ludwick. Here. And for the record, I know Mr. Grady is traveling away for tonight, and Tom will be late. Um, item number six, board guests. Do we have any? None this evening, no. Okay. Right into item number seven, superintendent's report. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, you have both of your student representatives here, so you may pick whether you want to start on the Fermi or the Enfield High side. Where did we start last time? I think we'll go Fermi for this side first. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, Oh, thanks. Okay. Um, <laughs> thanks, Grammy. Um, uh, just a little update. Last Friday, we had our Fermi Talent Show. That was a lot of fun. Um, everything went well, and I'm glad all the performers did great. Um, coming this Thursday, April 14th, Fermi High is having their Fermi Steam Night, and that's from 6 to 8. Kids have fun while learning about science, technology, engineering, math, physical education, and visual arts. Um, little kids come and they get stamps as they go to the booths and they uh, complete different subjects um, and they get prizes in the process of learning. Um, it's good we have high school students like in chem and physics classes that help out and they set up the booths and so they're learning as it goes too. Um, and it's great to see kids mentoring other kids while having a good time. And so I welcome everyone to come, bring their children, and uh, that'll be a great time. Uh, Buzz Robotics is having their competition this uh, Wednesday through Saturday at the XL Center. It's free of charge, and uh, Buzz was able to come to this one because we qualified for it. Um, we we won at WPI a while ago, and that's where we got this this blue banner. It's uh, we got nice. This WPI. So I think this will be hanging up in the the new school sometime. Uh, or right now at Fermi. Right now at Fermi. All right, thank you. Um, and uh, vacation is coming up, so I want to have uh, I want to wish everyone a happy vacation, and that's it for me. Great job. Go right ahead. Uh, Enfield High's orchestra students are actually going to Canada over break to compete against uh, other schools around the nation. So we're all cheering them on and wishing them good luck. Uh, Friday, May 6th, Enfield High is having the, their first pep rally in the brand new gym. So uh, we're all excited to see what the new gym looks like, even though I think some of the kids have snuck in there and already seen it. <laughs> um, on Friday, April 29th, student government members and cast members, grades 9 through 11 from both schools, are going to do a leadership reaction course down in Niantic, Connecticut, which um, is going to challenge them to work together. They're going to use that time to plan events for both of the schools at the end of the school year and also events for the beginning of next school year. If it goes well, they're going to look to the National Guard who's sponsoring this event for further activities. And the trip's going to be chaperoned by Jay Goucher, Dan Slavinsky, and Connell Clark. And then to end on a happy note, the National Honor Society at Enfield High ran a fundraiser this weekend at ShopRite and raised over $400 for the National Breast Cancer Foundation. Wow. Great. Thank you both. Good job. Um, item B out of superintendent report, the fiscal year 16-17 budget community conversation. Yes, as you know, these uh, 
community conversations are coming up. Uh, there'll be one tomorrow night with the council's holding, and then the joint one will be on the 20th that you'll be participating with the town council, and that one will be at JFK. So these are the, uh, the pieces of the, the budget puzzle that'll come together before the town council actually sets their budget. And they hope to do that the first week of May, from what we understand. And there's also a calendar of April events in there for you to, to look at. Anything from that all? Everyone all set? Okay. Uh, item number eight, audience participation. Do we have anyone signed up to speak? Anyone in the audience who'd like to speak? Sure. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I uh, move audience commu uh, participation move closed. Now we go to item nine, board comments. Yep, Mr. Neville? No comments tonight. Tina? I think you go. Uh, Stacy's not there. Stacy's not there. Okay, I'm sorry. We actually, I didn't realize there's actually a. Yeah. Okay. We'll have to go right ahead. We'll, we'll, we'll so, get, I, I'm we'll, Polish. I'd go the other way. Oh, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Walter. Sorry. Uh, just a few things. Uh, I did go to the bus robotics competition at uh, Hartford Public. Got yelled at by a cop for driving backwards, but that's another story. Um, but anyway, uh, great, great competition. Great time. Had a. Uh, Picture of me out on Twitter, so I've been tweeted. But uh, you know, awesome team, and they they work real hard, and didn't didn't make it like we wanted to, but still great participation and great time. Uh, also, the past Saturday we had a fundraiser for the Buzz Robotics, very well attended. I I don't know what the amount they made, but I know the 50/50 they made about $500 alone. So very good. Thank you all for coming for that. And that's all I have to say. Stacy, all, all set? Yeah, thank you. Ray? No, I'm nervous. <clears throat> well, a um, couple things. One, I'd like to give a uh, thank you and a shout out to Two Moms Out of Mission. They had uh, three events, two events uh, recently. One was the Easter egg hunt uh, for all the kids, kids and has worked through partnership with Enfield Public Schools. They had a vendor fair last weekend at, ha at Hazardville Memorial, and uh, they were quite successful. Steady stream of people coming through. I don't know what the numbers are, that the funds that they raised, but uh, the money uh, definitely helps the PTO do what they do. Um, good luck to uh, the Enfield High uh, Band heading up to Canada. Um, community conversation coming up tomorrow night. And one couple comments from last year. Lori and I attended for the Board of Ed, and with everything that's happening right now, it would be really good if people could show up and, and, and voice. We do listen. We don't always do what people want us to do, but we do listen. And last year we had three parents at the Barnard um, community conversation. And at that time we had, I think, 71 letters that went out the week before. There are questions. We answered their questions, uh, letters for, for um, potential uh, separation. This is a serious time. This is going to be a, this is a, a turning point in our school system. And I know that the board is going to be working with, with the superintendent to work with the town council to show them the reason why Enfield Public Schools needs to be the number two priority in town behind public safety, not number four or five. And we have to work through that. Um, so I'd like to get more than three people there tomorrow night. And when we have the final uh, hearing at JFK last year, we had six people. And we need to get more, more involved. We were all involved a few weeks ago. We need to get that, that kind of momentum, that kind of energy, and keep that energy going uh, with our community, with our town council, and with our board. Uh, as I said before, I feel very positive about the relationship we now have with the, with the town council. We're going to be working with them in a budget workshop, which hasn't happened in three years I've been on the board. And I'm looking forward to those discussions and showing them what our school does. Uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you, and have a great night, everybody. Thank you, Ray. Lori? Thank you. Um, Hazardville Memorial had their PTO meeting. Uh, they're doing a bang-up job over there. Uh, May 21st, they're having their fun run, and everyone's in encouraged to come. You can walk if you want to. Um, I attended the uh, Fermi Talent Show that they had. They did a great job. Uh, a lot of talented kids there. A uh, good variety of acts as well. And uh, they ended with uh, an instrumental and a slideshow all related to Enrico Fermi. It talked about his life. You actually heard him speak. And they really did a great job. It was very moving. Also, the Women's Club had their arts festival 
over at Enfield High. It was in the cafeteria, and a few of us attended that. A lot of talented kids in Enfield, a great variety of art presented there, and they had some live demos of students actually doing their painting, their clay work, showing us how they actually do what they do. Also, um, the committee met for the opening ceremony. Um, there's a lot of things in the works that we're planning, and uh, we're looking forward to the, the opening of the new high school. So that's about it. Oh, congratulations to the National Honor Society for raising all that money. I actually stopped by ShopRite and saw them there. So that was good. Kudos to them. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Tina? Yeah. Um, just a couple things. I also attended the art show, and kind of a funny story. My um, my middle schooler said I have something in the art show, but I don't. We don't have to go. And I said, Oh, we gotta go. We gotta go. So um, I think it was at one of the after school clubs. They did a big elaborate. Um, they had a jeep made out of uh, styrofoam and like the packing popcorn, um, and it was it was a theme based on a book. And there were a million little blue squirrels all over where the art festival was. And my son made one of those blue squirrels. And he found it. There must have been 150 blue squirrels, but you know, I was proud of him. So <laughs> I just thought that was a funny story because I said, you know, I'm looking at the wall, which one's yours? He's like, it's one of the squirrels. And I'm starting to look around and the squirrels are getting lots of lots of squirrels. Um, also, uh, one of the things that I'm learning now that I have kids in high school is, um, and this is for parents with kids in high school, um, start going to college fairs. I went to a college fair a couple weeks ago. Uh, we even brought my freshman along with my junior. Um, I learned so much at that fair about some of the things that the kids should be preparing for from freshmen in high school, especially if they're focused on a certain major. Um, things that I didn't know about, um, talking to the admission counselors, um, was huge. Um, every school looks at something different. It's not all about tests. So um, I learned a, a, quite a bit going to that college fair. And if your your student doesn't know what they want to do, if you get them going to there and they see a school that they like, that can that can get them thinking. So uh, if you see any college fairs, I, I recommend that you go. Um, the last thing I want to say is um, this is going to be very hard for me. And it's something I debated about. Um, I'd like to talk about something very disconcerting that happened last week and carried into this week. I've struggled to bring it up for fear of repercussions when it comes to the budget and the assignment of a new town council member. I dug deep and spoke to the people that always have my best interest at heart, my husband and my family. I decided that if I am silent, I have no right to continue on this board. I was elected to stand up for what is right, to be transparent, and to be honest. I am a member of the Joint Insurance Subcommittee. I have been on the front line of being able to see how the insurance fund was mismanaged. The insurance fund is a joint fund for the town and the board health insurance. This fund was managed solely by the town. The board would get their bill and pay it. What happened to the fund? Where did that money go? Is all the questions I've been asking. The board inadvertently found out about a meeting that was scheduled with the previous firm that worked with the former town manager to help set the insurance rates for the budget. We found out because our own superintendent and deputy superintendent were being excluded from the meeting as well. This did not sit well with the superintendent as it was our funds that were mismanaged by the town as well. Why would the superintendent and deputy superintendent be excluded? After some discussion, it was decided that the superintendent and deputy superintendent would be able to attend, but only them. No board members. Further, three town councilors were able to attend, not one of them being a Democrat. As I pressed along with Dr. Schumann, no legal reason, violation of charters or policies could be given to explain the exclusion of board members from attending. As a result of a governance meeting, it was decided that a Democrat from the council could go at the super secret meeting, and the super secret meeting was being turned into general government meeting, which means that board members could be excluded. As a board member, I'm extremely disappointed at this. I should have not have been the only one from the board fighting to be at this meeting. Am I the only one feeling this way? It's not about Republican or Democrat. It's about what's right. We have a fiduciary duty and those were board funds that were mismanaged by the town. 
Board members have a right to be in attendance and ask point pointed questions to learn what happened and to help avoid this happening again. Board members have a right to be there when such mismanagement is deeply affecting our budget. We need to be working together to rectify this insurance issue and the actions of the town leadership has made it difficult has made it difficult. It's taking on a political stand. We don't have room for political stands when we are both in a dire situation when it comes to the budget budget. Especially when it comes to our taxpayers, students and employees. This should not be happening and I encourage all residents to fight for transparency with the town government. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Anyone else? Yeah, go. go ahead. Yep. <clears throat> uh, sorry, I, I forgot to bring this up. Um, I think a lot of people are aware that there were some Facebook posts regarding the quality of food in our schools. I had a phone call today from a parent and a colleague on the board to discuss it. And so <clears throat> I just uh, think it would be appropriate for people to understand that the quality assurance protocols were enacted and no bad food got to our kids. Um, I think that, uh, and that, that's all I'm going to say to it, uh, I think that needs to be addressed publicly. And um, don't be surprised if the people who complained about it get a post from me, a private message tonight on Facebook. Anyone else? I just said a couple things. Um, again, I, uh, I want to thank the teachers from Enfield High and, and JFK who actually send those nice postcards to my kids every time they do something pretty good. So I think that's pretty cool. You know, it's the little things that I think are important. Also, uh, I want to give a shout out to all, all, the, all the teachers, but also the ones that I know specifically at JFK who actually played along on April Fool's Day and had a little fun with the kids. I know there's some things going on. I'm sure it happened at every school, but I know specifically what went on there. And I think Dr. Schumann, you uh, were unknowingly in, involved in one. So again, I, it's great to see, it's great to see, uh, again, having a little bit of fun and while still learning, and the t I know the teachers who are involved, uh, you know, played along pretty cool. So I think it's great. And the last thing I'll say is, you know, as folks know, we my team played it. We had some St. Bernard's teams playing in a, the state championship or a couple weeks ago, and unfortunately, we both didn't do very well. However, I mean, I think the one thing about again, as I said, about kids in this town is that, yeah, you know, yeah, we took it on a chin a little bit, man. But our kids played hard, and they made the town proud. I mean, they didn't give up. And they played to the end, and they played with class, and they played hard. And so then I think we see it. We're hearing about buzz robotics. We're hearing about all the competitions that our children are involved in, and it's great to see. And it's great to be a part of. And if anyone else doesn't have anything else, I will close. Close uh, item nine. Item ten: unfinished business. Transition update. Um, three things to report. First, the air compressors and lifts are operating fine. Uh, everything seems to be going along good in those areas. There's still a couple. Uh, uh, things left to finish up in the welding area, but that should be taken care of uh, very soon. As uh, you heard, the gymnasium will become ours after vacation. Uh, some people have gotten some sneak previews of it, but it is fantastic. So I think everyone's going to enjoy that. Our focus right now is on technology. There are four high-powered labs going into the new steam wing. Three graphics and engineering labs and one world language lab. Uh, what we've determined is the machines that are scheduled to go in there are between five and seven years old. And so we're, they, the new machines have been spec'd out. Uh, we're working on getting um, those all figured out in terms of quotes. And then uh, we're going to be approaching the building committee to see if there are funds for them to uh, buy those high-powered machines for those four labs. And then we can repurpose the five to seven-year-old machines into other spaces, the business education office um, rooms and things like that, where we don't necessarily need the power. Right now, we believe those machines could run the software but we don't know that they'll be able to run them for more than a year or so with the upgrades and the, the amount of uh, um, high technology work that we expect our students to be able to do. And from what I understand, in the engineering where they want to open up large renderings of uh, architectural designs, there just isn't enough capacity for those machines to allow them to do some of the work that we hope they're going to be able to do. So we're hopeful that uh, once we get it all spec'd out, we can bring it to the building committee and they'll be able to uh, appropriate the funds to um, to purchase new machines for those labs and then we can repurpose the other machines down. So that's our transition update for, for right now. Anyone have any questions? I only have one question. Is Are the gym and the cardio room open? The gymnasium will be open after the vacation. I meant the workout room. 
the cardio room we don't get back because yeah. it's still going to be a music facility until the end of this school year. Right. And I heard the weights were coming into the the uh, facility for the weight room. I don't know if they're all on board yet or if that's going to be finished up over vacation. Right. I had not heard that that room was available yet. But I knew it was just, they were just waiting for some plates to come up and, and come out of storage and get, get installed. So I'm hopefully that, that's going to be ready after vacation as well. Okay, uh, no, we'll move on to item 11, new business. Receipt of, receipt of and action upon recommendation of superintendent of schools con concerning teacher contract non-renewals in accordance with the Connecticut General Statutes 10-151. <coughs> I move that the contract of employment of Lauren Andrews, Tracy Ardioli, Renee Belageron, Daniel Bar Barrett, Adam Bailing, Donna Bella Pellucci, Brianna Sakala, Jacqueline Kilhill Kilhilene, Melissa Clark, Christopher <coughs> Colburn, Courtney Collins, Cheryl Connolly, Amy Cotto, Francis DeLeo, Allison Delphia, Amy Dennis, Tara DiCepolo, Angela Early Alves, Lindsay Eslinger, Melanie Finn Schofield, Kristen Fitzsimmons, Desiree Fontaine, Nicole Fontaine, Stephen Fix, <coughs> Deborah Gaskell, John Paul Gill, Eliza Gonzalez, Michaela Gorham, Donald Gamir, Aaron Hayes, Shawnee Harrelane, Jean Horton, Lauren Hughes, Alyssa Ivanoff, Jane Cars, <coughs> Allison Law, Isabel Matos, Kelsey McGuire, Kate Meissner, Adam Mitchell, Michael Mazzari, <coughs> Bridget Moriarty, <coughs> Kelly Morrison, Kim Muggleton, Heather M Munafo, Joshua Orgadowski, Richard Onafrey, Amber Pasco, Lee Picos, Caroline Pierce, no Nicole Rickey, Rebecca Rojano, Karen Rosenberg, Kelly Rossetti, Stuart Sanborn, Alyssa Santos, Jacqueline Son, Jennifer Scully, Lee Scordato, Kelly Shea, Rebecca Shiner, Kristen Sixby, Rebecca Scrabley, Bethany Sullivan, Heather Terralia, Justin Terralia, Alexander Tracy, John Ungeyer, Deborah Wagner, William Walpole, Mary Kate Walsh, Laura Williams, Jennifer Willis, Nicole Wright, and Evelyn Wolner not be renewed for the following year upon its expiration at the end of the 2015-2016 school year and that the superintendent of schools be directed to advise such persons in writing of this action. Second by, by Stacy. Any discussion? Yeah. Go ahead. Yep. For the last five years, we've been doing this. OK, and it seems to get longer. I think this is longer than the last year. It's probably the, the least desirable thing we do as, a, as, as board members. I think this is a meeting that I kind of dread. I think, I, I think everybody kind of dreads. You, it used to be that we would do these things, and then a couple of weeks later, we invite them back again because we wouldn't want to lose the valuable people that we have. I know Dr. Schumann and his folks do a thorough job of searching for a good talent and then recruiting that talent, bringing it in, and uh, we've been very, very fortunate with what our kids have. I think we're obligated to vote on this because otherwise we end up causing, costing the town a great deal, the school board, a great deal of money. And, and we, we have a legal obligation to do it. We all do it incredibly reluctantly. And I just think the public needs to know that this is not something we want to do. Um, in fact, we don't want to do it, but it's something we have to. I wish there was a time that we would get to that we would not be doing this all the time and that we would just be you know removing folks who are moving out of town or retiring or whatever these are the best and the brightest that we have here and i find it personally offensive that we have to do this so just wanted to say that right i want to echo tim's uh, sentiments on this um, but i want to add one thing for a lot of people out there going to be listening there's what I'm going to call a current fallacy that teachers can get a job anywhere. They can't. Um, while there is a demand, other towns are going through the same budget agony that we're going through. Our school system is teetering on going from, from good to great, to quote, quote Tom Collins. And we need, the, we need these, the, 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 
Yeah, we need these folks. They're, I, I go through the schools, especially the lower grades, and they do a fantastic job. And I agree with Tim. We have to do this. It is the reason why I came tonight specifically was to be here to show these teachers my support um, because they deserve it. And I want everyone to know that, that this board, I know, is going to do everything we can to keep these folks here. But it is a tough fiscal time. And we have to recognize that. But our goal is, as Tim said before, and I th is, is to educate our children all of our kids, and we can't do that without teachers and people talk about class sizes. Well, we'll see where this ends up, but we're gonna work hard and put the time in to make sure that we do get the funds, as much funds as we can to be reasonable so we can provide a world-class education for our kids today. Thank you, Ray. Walter? I just wanna remind everyone what our chairman uh, Tom Sard always says the state needs to be reminded that they have to educate K through 12, not include the colleges. And that's one of the dilemmas there. The state has to be reminded K through 12. Well, anyone? No. anyone else? Any other discussion? No. Roll call. Mr. Neville. Reluctantly, yes. Mrs. Thurston? Yes. Mr. Cruzel? Unfortunately, four. Mr. Peabody? Reluctantly, yes. Mrs. Ungeier? Reluctantly, yes. Mrs. LeBlanc? No. Mr. Ludwig? Four. Motion passes. Move on to item 12, board committee reports. Um, item A, building committee, Walter. Or I'm going to confer to our. Mr. Neville, because he was there and I wasn't. I went to the, the, the last meeting there, uh, and um, I, I think the, the good news is we're on target. Uh, I, I think that the weight room is being used based on some conversations that took place. I'd have to go back and look at my notes, but I, I think folks were using that already. I also think that we wanted to get it used because we were, I think we were, we were paying to store the equipment that we needed to put in there. Uh, in terms of the, the, uh, the other issues, uh, there were no major issues brought up there, uh, to be honest. And, um, you know, I, we, we brought up that the, uh, the uh, gym was going to be turned over after the vacation. And, I, um, and um, that, that really, that was about it. it, it the, the, the biggest issue was finance and dealing with the, uh, the things that Walter usually you know, deals with when we go there and very, 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 very well. So we have, we put off for three weeks the meeting. I think our next meeting is this Thursday, the 14th. I just want to add that I haven't been over there in a while because of the meeting's been so long ago that I did take a drive through yesterday. I saw the foundations pretty much all done for the music wing. Great. And, uh, and I, looks, looks like all the windows are in the A wing part. So that looks like it's, you know, what I could see from outside, but. I want to uh, give kudos to the to the staff and to students for putting up with construction. It's thank you for putting up with it, and uh, and they're plugging away. That's all I can say. Mm -hmm. It'll all be in the past soon, I promise. <laughs> and we'll like the results. Exactly. Any questions for anyone on the building committee? No. Um, item B curriculum. Ray, Tim. We haven't had Stacey? we haven't had a meeting. We're having a meeting tomorrow night, so okay. we haven't had a meeting. Since we, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, item C policy. Um, we're we are meeting at the end of the month, and again, we'll be have we will have stuff for the next in May. We'll have some of the state mandates that we have to have the board weigh in on. That's what <laughs> we're reviewing that now, and our meeting is at the end of the month. Walter, I don't know if you have anything. Yeah. That's it from policy. Um, and item D finance, right? We have our meeting coming up uh, a week from next Monday, and uh, we'll have our typical reports for you then. Any questions for finance? No. Moving right on to uh, item 13, approval of minutes, regular meeting minutes, March 22nd, 2016. Do I have a so, motion to So approve? moved. Moved by Walter, second by Tim. Any discussion? Show of hands or do we have to roll call? Show of hands for all approve. I wasn't here. So you abstained. One abstention. Lori. Okay. Uh, item 14, do we have any approval of accounts and payable? No. None? <laughs> all right. Thank you, Walter. Yeah. <laughs> Item 15, cor correspondence and cor communications. Yes, I have something. Yep. Uh, Elizabeth Boulay um, 
handed us a thank you card from the Pinkathon when um, they, what it says is, thank you for supporting the 2015 Enfield Pinkathon. Together we were able to raise over $10,000 for the Sunshine Kids Foundation and the Jacob Carlander Memorial Scholarship Fund from Elizabeth Boulay and the Pinkathon crew. So, great. that's great. Nice. Anyone else have anything? Uh, moving on to item 16, would anyone from the audience like to uh, come up and speak? Bob? Bob T. Katz, Thompsonville. I'm going to cover two items. One is the last thing that <clears throat> everybody re re said reluctantly, yes. The answer is yes or no under Robert's Rules of Order. This has been going on since the 70s, when 1971, when the, the school enrollment peaked in Connecticut. They put this law into effect, and it has to be set every year. Regardless if you get all the money you want for the budget, you, and the non-tenured -ten teachers have to be notified. And it was on when I was on the school board, it was discussed, it was passed, in all previous school boards before I was on it in the 90s. The second thing is, another board member says, well, we're number, the board uh, budget is number two. It isn't. The board budget exceeds the town budget by millions of dollars. And also, the town does $10 million of in-kind services, which is going to be explained, I think, tomorrow night, what services they provide to the school system. So the school budget, the school system is number one. The police department is only a small portion of the town budget, 21% of the total town budget, which is smaller than the school budget. So it, the procedure has been set up that the superintendent puts his budget forward to the school board. That's his vision of the school system. You look it over, you make the cuts or even add to it if you want. Then the town looks at it and it's discussed in public. And then the final number is made. And we go through all this and everybody gets upset. Uh, as far as this, this insurance, a lot of these numbers are set by contract that's negotiated in the copay. It's, everybody knows there isn't enough money being put in and the copay is too small. But a lot of that's set by contract. They can't change that. They're trying to. So as far as this word mismanagement, I think that should be eradicated from the minutes because there's no mismanagement. It's just what's set by contract and insurance costs have gone through the roof in the past two years because ex hospital expenses have gone up tremendously. So I wish everybody would stop getting upset and look at the real facts, which will be explained probably tomorrow night. Thank you very much. Gina Sullivan, 11 Spear Avenue. Um, I'm just wanting to follow up on um, Shannon Grant spoke last meeting, asked some really good questions about budget items that were there and then were gone. Um, she didn't really get an answer from anybody so she can't be here tonight she is uh, have a work obligation so I just wanted to ask if you've had a chance to maybe think about it and have any responses thank you Jennifer it's okay it's Jennifer Briett um, 19 Laurel Park um, I read through last meeting's minutes. I'm, I'm a, a little excited to hear that you guys are considering CABE. Um, I, I think that's a great idea. Hopefully it will still fit in with um, the budget cuts that looks like it's going to happen. And um, Tina, just thank you for being you. You're just, you're amazing. Um, it, it sounds like there's some misconceptions in the public about what the insurance problem is if people think it's co-pays and, contractual obligations and I don't know if there's a way to get it out there of, of what exactly 
the problem is with the fully insured and actuaries and percentage increases or decreases um, that did or did not occur. I don't know if somebody needs to sit down with a reporter and get it all out there so that some more public understands exactly. I don't understand it. I'm an accountant and I'm getting FOI requests back from the town um, finance manager and I don't understand it. And I read financial statements for a living. So um, it's my thoughts, thanks. Yes, we do. Motion to move to executive session. So moved. Moved by Walter, second by Laurie. All in favor? Go downstairs. Okay.